Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Welcome to Buy or Sell What the Hell with Jason Jenkins, Alex Z, and D. JJ began his career at Charles Schwab as a trader in the equity and options markets before moving to the sell side to trade fixed income at V Finance, JDB Financial, and CG Capital. With over a decade of experience in trading U.S. Treasuries and building out institutional analysis, he covered all the primary dealers, large buy-side money managers, and hedge funds. And now, he's applying his expertise to the cryptocurrency markets. Do you buy or do you sell? And welcome back to another edition of Buy or Sell. Oh my god. Yo, what the hell? I'm your host, Jason Jenkins. <laughs> Dimitri is here as usual. We got Alex Z and a special guest, my good buddy, Chinmay Patel, our technology officer uh, at Rhythm. Hey. How are you guys doing? Hey. Doing hey, good. Yeah. Chinmay, what have you been up to, man? I didn't get to catch up with you. Um, you know, this- I've been doing a lot of work in the blockchain recently. Last six months have been a roller coaster. First, I was like, in it, then out, out of it, then deliver, non-deliver. And last three months, I've been like more into blockchain as a system. More than cryptocurrencies, I think big, big, big believer of the blockchain ecosystem itself. So yeah, I've been doing some fun stuff. And you guys are warming up in Toronto finally. I mean, I've been watching the hockey. But, uh, it's it's still raining freezing. right now. So it's not that good, which is going in positive in the uh, in next two days. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in positive is a big plus, guys. Come on, stop laughing on me. <laughs> it's like ninety degrees in San Antonio right now. So far from well, where you are. I thought you were. Well, you know, you know, be, say what? Tri- where are you now? Where are you? I'm tri- in Iowa City currently right now. I live in San Antonio. In Iowa City, it's not that warm. It's 35 degrees outside. So well, uh, the the blockchain space hasn't cooled down up in uh, Toronto, right, Jinmei? What are you, uh, what are you doing up there? Not at all. So, we, like, yeah. Well, why should people uh, listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a team working on private and blockchain, uh, private and public blockchain solutions. So we have been writing smart contracts, auditing smart contracts. We have been building the integrations for the product end to end. And uh, the biggest plus that we have, we have a software development background. So we look at every product as a, as a software product that is used by the end user. And we make sure that the project gets delivered at the end. So many companies start something, but they don't have the, either the bandwidth or the expertise to pull off the project. We have the opposite problem. We just make sure that everything gets delivered, whether it's a good idea or a shitty idea. We try to make it good, but it gets delivered regardless. <laughs> <laughs> you try to put lipstick on a pig if you can. Do you, do you tell them, like, it. but huh? if, that, uh, that is, if that is a reason the client has started believing in, that yes, there is a reason to put the lipstick on the pig, we don't see the vision. And if they do, we go with it. Okay. Oh. That's bravery. <laughs> <laughs> we try. We try. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, JD. Beatrix, so do we. I know we want to get into some stuff that Chinmay had teed up to, to talk about. Um, why don't we do a rundown on the markets real quick, and then we can hit on those topics. I mean, we're still kind of flirting with what we call our pie line, the 6,000 level on BTC. It seems that the regulation, uh, regulatory this, regulatory that, seems to be the narrative that's kind of dominating the market. And, you know, I kind of, the more, it, I've been kind of talking about this, but, What's interesting is that, you know, all the valuations that we wanted to give Bitcoin when we were running up towards 20,000 is why it's going to be half a million and why it's going to 60,000 by next quarter. All the lofty, you know, valuations were all based on this, this institutional money coming into the market. And the only way in hell you're going to get any compliance um, department to sign off on doing anything in crypto is... We got to have the regulation. So while all this news is taken poorly of regulation, 
every headline seems to be well, what Bitcoin's down on regulation news and blah, blah, blah. It's the fact that the cat the catalyst for us to actually make a new high is going to be that the market begins to be regulated. Yeah, yeah, and I, I see a lot of people complain about the clear manipulation in the markets too, where you see some of these spikes. And I mean, the only the only way that's going to go away is with more volume and liquidity and regulation. Yeah. So yeah. that's what's interesting. What's the narrative that's taken us down is going to be the same narrative that takes us to new highs. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it really is <clears throat> the short term view, but it's, you know, the long term gain. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Um, I think it's going to be show that rise of the security, security tsunami that's going to come the security tokens. Uh, you know, as soon as there's that regulation, that guidance there. I mean, I, I've spoken with the, one of the previous projects I've spoken with on announcements with there. Like the idea of being able to securitize yourself globally is not a bad idea. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if there's a roadmap to that, like, hey, I'm a small company in San Antonio, and I want to allow the masses to invest in my company because I think it's a solid idea. Why can't I? You know, I yeah. think so. Um, it's going to be cool. interesting. I think it's a good good point that you mentioned, JJ, that that's going to be the catalyst to the new higher highs. So, I mean, I don't know when that's going to be. I mean, these subpoenas that the SEC issued, it's going to yeah. be 60, 90 days for... I actually do know. It's going to be October 12th at approximately 3.50 p.m. Mark your calendars, everyone. Yeah, why? What happens then? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just bullshitting because everybody <laughs> likes to think that everybody has like a... Everybody thinks they're a fortune teller. Like, yeah. Hey man, there's a fifty fifty chance you're right. It's either gonna be <laughs> it's either gonna happen or it's not. That's fifty fifty, right? <laughs> that's the Mount, exactly how the that Mount Gox, the Mount Gox uh, whale that's been selling, he um he takes his lunch break at uh twelve thirty. And so when he gets back from that is usually why the market goes down. Did you guys know that? I did not know that. <laughs> no, I, I know that know. now. It's a kind of a long lunch, but if you time it up pretty really good, <laughs> well, that's, that's how we've been trading this week. Um, so I guess we could get into some of the the stuff that we want to talk about after we, we know some market movement. Um, it's been just as volatile as it's been since January, but um, now let's get into some 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 deeper topics, Jinmei, that you want to talk about, right? Um. The dice, Diceo? Are you saying Diceo or are you saying Dico? You can say Diceo or Dico. Either works. People understand. It's about the feeling, not the not the word. Don't worry. Okay. Well, for for you guys listening, uh, many moons ago, which is like two years ago, but in crypto time, that's that's a lifetime. Uh, there was the DAO, Distributed Autonomous Organization. Um, it allows you to pour a bunch of ether into this autonomous agency that was going to make business logic decisions for you and, and make money for you. And it was, it was a great idea, uh, the idea of just this business, this company that ran itself. And that, that's what the DAO was. And if you guys don't know how that ended, because some of you got into crypto just last year, um, it did not end well. Um, <laughs> one savvy computer programmer was able to to find a glitch in the matrix and start handing himself ether like it was going out of style. Um, he was basically draining the DAO of all the ether that was in that smart contract. Um, people didn't like that. There was a big fight. It was like, well, he's he's a pirate, but he's a damn good pirate. He deserves his booty. <laughs> and then there was <laughs> then there was a whole other camp of people that was like, man, that's too much booty for any one man. We need to fort the Ether blockchain um, and just make sure that that Ether never moves. Um, so if you look at now times, it appears that that second camp won because there's Ether and there's Ethereum Classic, Ether Classic. 
So if you if you like Ether Classic, you're on a blockchain where that pirate is living well. And he is doing okay. Because Ether Classic's like what? In the 30s now, USD? Mm-hmm. I haven't looked in a while. But so he's doing well. He's got all that ether. He stole it. It's kind of like Somalia, like, okay, we know they're pirates, just don't go there. Um <laughs> And then we have Ether, the Ether that's on Coinbase, the Ether that you're probably familiar with, where that guy's Ether is locked and it can't move. So that was the DAO, and that's how that ended. But Chinmay, I'd like if you could you know, help our audience understand what's the, the DICO, Distributed Autonomous Initial Coin Offering. 100%. So that's a great story. And uh, uh, people have learned from what happened in the past. And uh, from there, let's take a second path on the same time, which uh, like last year time zone, where a lot of lot of ICOs happen, roughly thousand of them. And to be precise, 902 based on uh, I think there is a company called Token uh, uh, Token Listing. So they list all the tokens and uh, they're going live. And there are 902 initial coin offerings happening last last year. 46% of them already failed. No activity, nothing, no reports happening. Founders are not even reporting uh, on social media. Blogs are dead. Website doesn't exist kind of scenario. And there's more 130 uh, of our, have stopped the communication in the last few months. So altogether, they are expecting that 60% of all the ICOs have failed in last year which is quite shocking. And there are major reasons behind it is there is really no accountability for the entrepreneur or the developer. Once they raise money, the money's in their bucket. They can do whatever the hell they want to do with it. So smart people were thinking, what can we do? What can we not do? At the same time, in January timeframe, uh, Vitalik goes and say, coins the term DICO. So he combines decentralized autonomous and takes ICO from it and calls it DICO. And uh, the idea behind it is uh, you, instead of getting all the money up front on the token generation event, you get the money periodically, whether it's monthly, weekly, uh, uh, like semi-annually, annually, whatever the funding rounds are, you get money accordingly and you hardcore that, those limits and cadences inside the smart contract itself. So that way, entrepreneurs are accountable until the money runs out from the system. Now, the fun part is you can, developers can, uh, in the smart contract itself, figure out a way to ask for money and remove some money. But generally, DICO is, instead of giving all the money at once, you break it down and if you need more money, uh, you just ask to the, uh, uh, to the investors and investors whether they will say yay yeah or nay and uh, whether you'll get more money or not. So it's, a, it's more, mature way of doing it it's more it's like next generation of ico you can call it ico 2.0 as well mm-hmm. mm. that makes sense makes sense um is anybody actually trying to implement that yet Jinmei? yeah so there are some companies who have started doing it uh there is one that is happening right now it's called the abyss uh uh network it's for the gamers it's like gamers token uh, I haven't looked into full mechanics yet. Their idea is instead of focusing on uh, uh, investors uh, and giving them votes, they have selected uh, from the community some uh, investors who are going to help them uh, do the voting. So they call them oracles, and which is the standard language in blockchain anyways. So the oracles decide whether to give more funding or not, and oracles can also decide whether to cancel the project and refund the, uh, all the money back to the uh, investors itself, depending on how much money is left in the smart contract. Mm. So yeah, they, that one company, they are doing an ICO right now. Uh, DICO was launched, like the coin was termed in January, let's say a couple, couple of months to code it. And there are other companies who are trying to like get through it, not there yet kind of scenario. So in next one or two months, I'm expecting a lot of companies doing DICOs. Is it, um, if we could Sesame Street a little bit, <laughs> is it kind of like when you, you participate in like a Kickstarter and they don't meet their funding round for whatever reason, you get your money back? Except for this, it's with if they don't meet the milestones on their roadmap, you get your money back. Yep, that's pretty much 
that's well explained. You have to go through some uh, voting mechanisms. Uh, you can, as a community manager, decide when to ask for refund and not. But in a nutshell, yes, exactly what you explained. Mm. Have you uh, have you came across any sort of difficulties when developing it or studying it? Yeah. So the problem is there are a lot of because it's a lot of unknown unknowns in the market right now because people haven't done that many DICOs yet. Uh, we don't know what all kind of different attacks or vulnerabilities are there in this particular framework. So some of the common one is uh, a common argument that I've heard is why can't in the pre-sale uh, founders develop slash developers give themselves enough voting rights so that no matter how many uh, funds they raise, they will always have enough voting rights uh, when the voting happens to either refund the project or whatever. So yes, that's a problem. Um, solution is basically you don't have pre-sale uh, events. What you have is two types of tokens, whether you have uh, is a utility token and that is a voting token and voting tokens are not allowed in the pre-sale and the founders and the slash developers cannot have uh, the voting rights. The voting rights are only for the investors. Now that is too much power to the investors. So it's all about writing, having the right balance mm -hmm. and uh, how much voting is required. What if people don't vote? There are, there are a lot of questions, but I see all the questions as uh, different knobs. When you're trying to fine tune a system, you like try to like go a little up and like try the mechanism, then go a little down on different variables and try the mechanism. So there is a lot of trial and error that needs to go through to smoothen out the entire process. But but you're right. Uh, there are problems. Of course, this is not a solar bullet. Uh, it's just going to take time to smoothen out those curves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's creative. I mean, the accountability is a big piece. I just wonder if we're overcomplicating it. I mean, there's so many brilliant minds that, you know, get behind the scenes on that stuff and try to to engineer something like that. At the end of the day, it's just about getting the, the right capital behind the right management team with the right idea at the right time. Um, I guess I would say that maybe some of the challenges with that is you know, when you're when you're in business, things that always take a little bit seem to take longer than you anticipate a lot of times, and different obstacles come up. So, you know, how does the how does the entrepreneur how does you know how do you make certain plans with certain amount of capital, and then you know you got a deadline for a month or two, and it's important to be able to hit your metrics, but at the same time, if you yank the rug out from underneath the yeah. Or, or or the other thing too is that these investors, we live in a kind of society obviously that wants to make money, you know, immediately. Yep. And so they don't get the return they want in uh, several months, and then they all vote to. You know, that's kind of like that's that might be the, the tough challenge I see. <clears throat> it is a tough challenge. So generally, and this is the proposed ICO framework where you don't revoke the funding altogether. What you generally get is you have a constant flow of money coming and the voting happens for two reasons and two reasons only, which can change in different game, game dynamics. But in this game dynamic, the, the voting happens for two reasons. One, to receive more funds regularly on top of what you're getting regularly or cancel the project entirely. So either you're like voting for getting more funds on monthly basis, or you're basically saying, nope, this project is bad, let's just have a voting. And if the sub, like getting 51% people to say yes, uh, it's tough, unless there is some crazy shenanigan going in the, in, the, in, the, in the bag that we are not aware of. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that might be beneficial is if it allows the project to get started faster because the investors are less hesitant to make you know, one big bet all at once and not know what's going to happen six months. If it's like, well, I want, I'm thinking about putting 10 million in, but how about we start with two? We'll see how it goes for the first quarter. And then we got another, you know, a couple things on the roadmap here. Then we'll, we'll unlock another two. I think it would maybe help capital move faster to invest mm -hmm. that way than, than sitting around and evaluating the project for three months or, 
like you know, like we have right now, the SEC and everything, you're gonna have you have a lot of capital that's kind of in waiting mode here, trying to figure out. You know, that is smart. I didn't think of that. That's definitely definitely true. Uh, it definitely can move investors uh, faster for funding because they have the if if the execution is not going well in six months, they can always uh, yeah ask for re refund, and then if the community decides. You can get the refund back as well as a as a sound advisor. So never thought of that. That's a smart that's a smart suggestion. Yeah, I think it's probably a, it's it's going to be less. Well, I already made my point. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to think from the perspective of like what is traditionally going on. So if you look at traditional funding models, you are receiving funds in. Uh, uh, in series, so angel round, seed round, series. Yeah, series. I was just going to mention that. It's like programmed series routes, but go ahead. Exactly. So in this case, you're raising all the funds up front, but they are being released to you in seed round, series A round, series B round, series C round. So it's it's very similar and very compatible to the traditional model, and that might make investors more comfortable. And coming back to Jason's point, that might make investment process much more faster. Mm -hmm. That's true. It it also is, it's it's kind of, it gets the dance doesn't get so fun when you think about the reason behind some of these tokens, right? So, for instance, it's like you know, like those investment rounds and stuff like that are built with an exit in mind, right? Like typically a VC, the more money they put into something, the more passionate they are about it, and they want to have a great exit. Like an exit's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. But for crypto, an exit isn't necessarily a good thing because some of these tokens have utility, and especially if they're built on like proof of stake, like they need to have people holding them in order, you know, for for them to 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 let that blockchain work or to let that little micro economy work. So if you have an exit in mind, like how does that factor into? The utility of the token. I think I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. So, I like that. That yeah. that, that I think is when things get messy. But, um, anyways, sorry, I didn't mean to derail the conversation. No, that. no, that, you, you, I'm, I was just thinking. You're you're definitely right, and I've been thinking about. In fact, I wrote a small blog post about this as well, where we were discussing uh, different types of. Uh, uh, opportunities like what ha I see you happen what next and uh, for, the, for the traditional way you have a clear exit strategy either you're getting acquired either you're shutting down or you're doing an IPO there's a clear exit strategy for and there's a limited things or, or merger but there's a very limited uh, exit strategies what is the exit strategy for a crypto project it's something that I have not seen yet like what mm -hmm. do people do if the project dies uh, do the acquire company absorb the tokens and release another token uh, or do they uh, kill that blockchain uh, do they have two tokens simultaneously going do they absorb the product do they not absorb the product those are a lot of questions that I am not like I have not seen any models that work yet but those are the questions I would be happy to like find answers to yeah, mm -hmm. that is interesting or like what what would you do now if some of these some of these projects where they're actually making money um, that maybe aren't necessarily just network currency based tokens, but they're actually have a you know they're trying to build a business, but they have a token. What happens? Bring up a good point. I mean, what if they do decide to go public? I mean, yeah, what happens with the token, or or I think you're going to start to see maybe some of these uh, you know some of these coins have been around longer that have obviously have made a huge amount of money. I mean, I could see Dash going out and buying up some of these projects. We haven't really seen any acquisitions. Yeah. In the space. <laughs> I don't really know what that would look like. <laughs> I mean, um, we're about to buy C1, right? But I think it's traditional. The, the, uh, the Coinbase announced that they're looking at acquire earn.com. But I don't... Token? Um, yeah. But no. what did... Like earn.com does I'm I'm not sure. They don't have a token themselves, do they? No, they don't. Yeah. They, like, uh, it's a traditional acquisition, no? I think it's just traditional, yeah. So yeah. never mind. I mean I guess if 
I guess if like Coinbase merge with Binance, it shouldn't change the Binance coin. It can still operate the same way, still have the same utility. Mm -hmm. It will be interesting. Now, I think that is something that obviously the market will mature. So, uh, be, I get, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that would be interesting. Yes. <laughs> I guess if the audience would take anything from this is that to look out for DICOs uh, or DICOs. I kind of like DICO. I don't yeah, know. That is a DICO. But then uh, people, people uh, force you to change your ICO. <laughs> reminds, me, reminds me of the Tyco building. It's a big pink building in Boca where all the Tyco shenanigans were going on. <clears throat> My old office was right over there. Tyco? Like That's the people that make toys? For that one, the, the whole Tyco fiasco. I don't remember that. What was a Tyco fiasco? Oh, man. Look that one up. <clears throat> <laughs> um. Well... There's something else that I observed recently, um, not recently, but observed enough to the point where it's it's worth talking about. Just when we talk about the longevity of the space, because a lot of it is speculative, uh, for lack of a better word. But some things you just can't speculate on, and those things are like provable evidence. And and one of the things that I've noticed over the past four years is that like you see a lot of high grade professionals leaving. Uh, where they are, which is somewhere that's very successful, to to join this crypto fiasco, right? So, I think the thing that I clipped to you specifically in the show notes, um, I'm having a hard time pulling up my show notes right now. Oh, there they go. Uh, was uh, Square hired this CFO from? Uh, sorry, Circle hired the CFO from. From Square, which Square is like an established company. Um, I think I've seen those little Square card readers for like eight years now. Everybody has them. Um, people are putting Square as in like their software as a service in the background. They're, they're point of sale machines. Um, but this guy who's at a company that looks like it's going to be around for a while, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to go work in crypto. Like, is that not a sign of like the, the long term? I guess bullish of bullishness of this entire space is that this keeps happening. Yeah. You know, it has to be to me. And to me, that's a very bullish indicator. That's not on a chart, but I guess, I don't know. That's, that's just my opinion on it. Is that because that keeps happening? What do you so. think? Yeah. yeah. I think it shows how exciting and, I think it gives people an opportunity to partake in something they're excited about and passionate about because I've never talked to more excited people before than people talking about blockchain. I think it's something new and I think a lot of people are starting to see that, seeing where it can go and seeing how much it's already proved itself, uh, not just in prices, but just from a development standpoint. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's proved itself by now and I think we're just going to keep seeing people coming over. Yeah, they're gonna make that. They're gonna make. They, I think more people feel comfortable making that leap now than they did maybe you know three four years ago. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation too. I was thinking about it today. They're not. They're not interested in trading stocks. You know. Like, no. I think the first stock I looked at was was JetBlue. Maybe and it was out of a paper in like fifth or sixth grade. And then I think. Berkshire Hathaway, which was at like thirty thousand. But if you're in, if you're in middle school, high school, college, just graduated college, no, they don't. They're not interested in stocks. They'd rather trade something digital. No, I mean, and when you see such cool developments like the DAOs and DICOs that we we're just talking about, I mean, it's so much more interesting and innovative than the traditional corporate structures. I mean, it, that's just an example, but I mean. What a what an interesting thing you could be part of. Yeah, that to me is the most exciting part. Like I remember trying to sell some friends on Facebook the Dow, and they were like, "I don't understand what these words mean." And I was like, "You're gonna own Skynet. That's what it means." And they were like, "Skynet's a bad thing, according to the movies, right? That's Terminator." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's bad, and like it's good if you own a piece of it until <laughs> it goes bad. But imagine what it's like owning it." <laughs> so, like, 
it is a little bit more exciting to go to your point, Alec. A lot of these things, like when I talk about, you know, basic attention token, people are like, oh, I never realized I was using the internet like that. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> now you know, own some of it. I was, so, uh, I was reading about, I forgot where I read it, maybe Forbes or something, but there was an interesting argument that like the more about the die codes, uh, about the modern corporate structure is one of the biggest innovations of the 20th century, which kind of seems weird with the computers and internet. But I mean, the, ar- the article argued it pretty well about the relationship between like the board executives and shareholders and how they use, how effective it is to use and raise capital and pursue goals. And I think DICOs are definitely worth watching because when you take that yeah. kind of structure paired with the rigid nature of the blockchain, I think that can, yeah. I, 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 I can't even imagine where that's going to go. It's, it's, you're very right. And it, it's, it's a, you know, okay, I, I don't get access to that funding unless I work my ass off. It's great long-term incentive. It's a great long-term mm-hmm. incentive structure. Like I don't, Yes, I have this certain percentage of the funding that does go to me as the founder and as the person putting in the blood and the sweat and the tears. But I'm not going to get that percentage unless I work my ass off. I think it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And there's there's one more relationship we didn't, we didn't really hit on yet was that that corporate structure that's worked so well that uh, for profits and results. When you take a look at these altcoins and ICOs that's been popping up, and that's kind of how you open the show, Chinmay, but... These, they're popping up and they're trying to copy that structure, you know, with the CEOs, CEOs, but there's not that same relationship because tokens don't give equity and there's no voting rights. So that's the, the structure just doesn't work the same way. But when you pair it with the blockchain, the actual blockchain and what it's capable of with a DAO, I, I, I think that kind of solves that relationship problem. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Those are good points, Alec. And the, the innovation side of it, and actually, you know, when we're joking about Tycho, see, that was so Tycho was basically a four hundred million dollar fraud scam that that the the executives ran, and this was in two thousand one, two thousand two. So Tyco was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. They were doing, they were considered a big blue chip company. So they did healthcare, manufacturing, electronics and things. But but basically the CEO was an example of the, the management just absolutely defrauding the whole company and all the shareholders. I mean, uh, I forget the guys' names, but they, they eventually got like 25, 25 years, but they were having you know, throwing birthday parties for their wives, two million bucks a night. Wow. There's a story a guy spent like six thousand dollars on a shower curtain. Um, and so they just totally s- smuggled out funds from the company. And that was one of the biggest I mean, that's up there with WorldComs and the, the Enrons. And that's to your point there too, Alec. With if you put not only the initial seed seed rounds and capital raising, you put that on a, a timeline through the blockchain, there's that accountability, but you could do the same thing for, you know, um, how the management is running funds through the company. You know, you could put that on the blockchain or you could put their bonuses based on smart contracts. So yeah, you got to do this, this, and this, but then we know that if this is, if this is, you know, you hit these metrics and the, the funds are released instead of before the execs are just giving themselves bonus bonuses and benefits and hiding it um so you're right and you can also do lock down the vendors as well so for example um you're trusting that the the developers will make sure that to to get the best of the best uh to do certain things and you can lock down those particular vendors and then you have a guarantee that they're not going to offshore it to some random country in the world and get the shitty product out of the door so you can lock down vendors, you can lock down insurance providers, you can lock down uh, marketing agencies, you can lock down a lot of ways the fund can be used. And some can argue that it's a bad thing for uh, for the developers and that's why developers may not even do it. But at the same time, if the developers uh, are very fresh out of school or a noob, then they would be going through uh, a lot of trouble getting, getting a lot of uh, uh, trust 
from the investors. And if putting all this, if and else is gain trust from the investors, then all power to them. Yeah. Seems like it's going to be a powerful tool. I don't think we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot more people using this structure. Um, because one, it seems like a pretty good correction. It's not an overcorrect. It's a pretty solid correction from what was happening at the end of 2017 and situations that just like that Tyco situation you were just talking about keeping stuff from that from hap- keeping stuff like that from happening this mm-hmm. seems like a good correction but um on to the next thing that we want to talk about because that's how segways work ladies <laughs> and gentlemen you just completely stop one thing <laughs> and start, start talking about the next uh we're pros. So <laughs> with I'm sorry. I made myself laugh with how bad that segue was. But um so uh, Big Daddy on on campus, Coinbase, uh finally said what everyone has known and they've been alluding to for a long time, but they're like, Hey, we're gonna start doing some ERC twenty, we're gonna start playing that game within the next coming months. Um, they're going to start launching ERC-20 compliant tokens on GDAX first because they have to launch them on GDAX first because don't get it twisted. And let me say this to the audience. You've gotten lots of things twisted. Just look at this Facebook fiasco. We thought that was social media. No. Giant spy. (laughs) Coinbase is an exchange. They're not a future bank. I know a lot of you use them like a future bank. And that's why they charge you out the ass to use their Coinbase services instead of just using GDAX. Uh, so they're going to launch these tokens on GDAX first, make sure the infrastructure is set in place for their exchange, and then it's going to slowly go to the Coinbase format and into their other services as well, the custodian service and some of the other stuff. Um, but what in the world is this going to have an impact on market-wise? In my, like layman eyesight i'm like okay so whichever token launches on coinbase is going to the moon like that's that's yeah. my stupid logic but well i don't think it's stupid when you look at the amount of people using coinbase i mean where they had like a million signups in a week at one oh, point thanks thanks alec that makes me feel i mean how i mean that's that's, that's the <laughs> obvious thing it, it's not stupid it's obvious <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, whatever coin is going to be on there, including Ethereum, because don't you have to have Ethereum gas to? Yeah, you have to have Ether. To those? To, so, you have to have Ether to have the gas to. I mean, to, as much buy. as everyone hates the, I mean, the complete centralization, especially, I mean, just among exchanges, even that you know Coinbase is. But I mean, it, it, you you can't deny what the effect is going to be, at least short term, until that monopoly, you know, until more people rush into the space that first mover advantage doesn't mean as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could it lead to the actual flipping? Maybe Bitcoin won't be that dominant. Maybe Bitcoin dominance is going to come to a low because Bitcoin is just Bitcoin, but ether can be all things. So I don't know. I'm just speculating at this point. <laughs> There'll be a lot of back and forth. I think. Yeah. You know, I think it's good. You got just more awareness. Cause most people have heard of Bitcoin. They've never heard of anything else. You know, Should we play some like public bets of which ERC-20 tokens we think are going on there? So that way, if they if they do go on there, we can claim that we're uh, fortune tellers and geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should. And we have recording to prove it. Yes. Did what you say groove it? No, prove it. We have recording to prove it. Yeah, yeah, we record. This is documented, so <laughs> we could, we definitely can. I'm gonna throw my three out there. I'm gonna think that. Do we have to say like, yes, I own these, as like a disclaimer? Do it. Okay, yeah. So f- f- all like totally f- for for forthcoming here. I own these three, but I think the solid three are probably bad. Status and and Golem, I don't know. Mm. Those are my three. I've never traded Status. It's a looker. It's a looker. I agree with you on that. You don't think 
Oh My's Go is going to be on there? Um, I think that's number one contender. Me say go, yeah, that probably. I mean, when you look at the support that project has from the Ethereum development community. I still torn. I don't know how much of it is great marketing or they're actually getting the support. I, I mean, they have, they have the development support. Yeah, that's true. Aren't they having those like a me say go calls where like yeah. seven of them hop on a Google Hangout and talk about developer stuff? I'm pretty sure Vitalik wore a t-shirt too. Yeah. <laughs> that guy does all kinds of stuff though. I know. I just joking. <laughs> um, Amisego well, is actually a really strong one because they're working the most heavily with Plasma. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, there aren't a lot of options. I know like what the majority, is it like 70% of the top 100 are Ethereum? I don't know what the exact number is, but it's a lot of them uh, are in Ethereum uh, blockchain, but I think Coinbase has the stipulation that it needs to be a working product. And I don't know what that constitutes as, but you know, it <laughs> definitely eliminates a lot of them. Hell yeah. yeah. That eliminates a lot of them. Doesn't that eliminate Omise Go? I don't I don't know. I mean, I think they got beta, don't they? I don't know if they have the I don't think they have the beta completely launched. I think they said May for Plasma. Yeah. There's oh, how about uh, Salt CRC twenty, right? Salt yeah, is no, ERC twenty. Salt's a good one. All right, what are your three? I already put my three out there in the ether now. No pun intended. I'm just looking through what's on Exodus. You know, those shapeshift guys seem to they only want to list coins that they think's legit on their platform. Maybe zero 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 X. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's probably number two for me than Pat. Yeah, zero X. I mean, when you take a look at the next wave of exchanges are gonna be all decentralized and zero X is a contender to run all of them. Yeah. As a backbone. Yeah. Mm, I didn't think about zero X. I mean, I don't I don't think you can ignore it once these exchanges start to mature a little bit. What about you, Chin Mei? From a developer standpoint, what what excites you the most? Or what do you think? So I'm I'm totally with you there. And that's why I jumped in. Like Zero X is pretty fantastic. Like uh uh I think Ocean, uh Ocean X that they built on top of it, Ocean X or Ocean Zero X. What's uh, the symbol on that one, Chin Mei? Say again? What's the symbol on that one? Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's basically you can see Ocean X is a protocol. Sorry, Zero X is a protocol, and Ocean X, uh, Ocean Zero X, or something like that. But I can't remember the exact token name. But they're basically the product that uses Zero X protocol, and they are the first one, according to them, uh, implementing the Zero X protocol end to end, and then providing a front end UI for for the end users. So they are doing pretty well as well. So in generally speaking, uh, we are talking to at least two or three people who wants to build like decentralized exchanges and I'm like why are you wasting your money right now and now uh, all of them has their own reasons and that's where the pig and lipstick idea come come across uh, uh, Dimitri from the from the very beginning where we come back and say look if you think this is good idea prove it if you prove it then we'll we'll build it but all are focusing on zero X as the core base well, so considering that zero X is strong contender for that yeah it is um it and you know like it just popped in my head when you were saying that Shin May is we never really talked about this Facebook fallout, but you know the community's always been talking about how we should own our own data and uh get paid for it. Maybe they make a big push with the bat and you know it would be good. Take advantage. Time. Take advantage of that wave right now. Yeah. Yeah, because you know? people just don't know like it's weird. It's like you tell your friends and family, like, "Hey, look at all this crazy Facebook news. They've been spying on us hardcore." And they're like, "Oh, well, what else am I supposed to do?" I'm you like, own all your data and you don't own any of it. Yeah, and they're like they're making all these millions of dollars off of you. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> no. oh, gotta it's go. cool that we, I think it's actually should just become part of the show because we always record this time and then that bell goes off. That's a and it's like. Hey. Right down on the floor. Yeah. Right behind the backstage there where everybody waves. We're right actually doing the show behind that. <laughs> we all the crypto weirdos hanging out on the blockchain. They don't you keep us in the shadows. Yeah, look real close. We're back there. 
Um, Sorry, Dimitri, so you were gonna make a good point there. I can't, I can't there. even remember because I feel You're like I was in a boxing to... match and it, and the round just came to an end. <laughs> trying to gather my thoughts and my breath. Um, you were talking about Facebook fallout. Yeah, yeah, and like you tell people, like I tell my my friends, I'm like, yeah, it's, Facebook's bad, and they're like, yeah, but there's what else am I gonna do? Like I click <laughs> the buttons and I put the stuff in Facebook. Like, yeah, where do I absolutely. Then, they go back to their own like Facebook apps and they just keep adding more pictures. So, I I think Facebook yeah. fallout is not. Uh, it's going to have a significant impact, but they're gonna recover. This is not something that people didn't know, in my opinion. Like I. The moment I started using Facebook, I'm like, whatever I put on it will is not my data. That's how that's the mentality I started using Facebook with. Uh, so, and I'm pretty sure most of the people who are tech savvy and still using Facebook, they will not be surprised with what just what just happened. It's more about people who were like, oh, Facebook's good, and suddenly they see this, and suddenly they have like suddenly they drop out, which which is rare. I don't think they're they're too hooked. Yeah. It's. I, and, I saw one Twitter, one tweet that was funny. Is a guy was like, he asked somebody. He said, "Hey, what are you gonna do now to Facebook? It looks like it's going under." And he's like, "Oh, it's cool. I'm just gonna use WhatsApp to talk, and I'm gonna use Instagram for my pictures." <laughs> and he was like, no, "They huh? own those." <laughs> so. so. <laughs> yeah. You know. Even uh, I was just thinking. Even if zero X isn't chosen, ZRX or whatever the the ticker is. Uh, isn't chosen by Coinbase. You had to think about all these people are going to be owning. So if they could buy all these different ERC20 tokens easily, mm -hmm. there's going to be more people owning them, period. So when more people own them, they're going to need a way to exchange them easily. Yeah. So if 0x is the means of exchange of these tokens, it doesn't really matter if Coinbase offers them or not. They offer they offer what needs to be traded on the, on the protocol. So kind of a weird yeah. indirect... Um, for it. Either way, it's a win-win for zero X. Uh, zero X. And, uh, and anyway, the, the project that I was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, I don't see if they have a token or not, but the website is theoceanx.com. And uh, they basically said they are the, they're not saying that they're the first one, but they have a clear symbol saying powered by zero X with the logo on it. That quite um, authority saying, yep, this is what we're going to have zero X as the, our, our core fundamental platform that we're going to build our front end on top of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I think zero X has, has a lot. So you're just, uh, you're going all in on zero X figuratively speaking. They're one, two and three. Uh, gonna... For me, I'm, I'm not a trader, so I don't like to hold altcoins that much, but, uh, ocean X I'm seriously considering. Mm, okay. The perspective of a developer. I like it. Um, it's for our listeners that zero X is kind of a, it's kind of newer on the scene. I mean, we didn't, I don't think our community was really mentioning it or talking about it much until this year, but the symbol is ZRX and it actually trades pretty well. It, it made the low here in March. A lot of these coins put in their lows in February and actually it traded down. I'm even looking at it versus tether. And it made its low down around 40 cents, and it's back up at six, almost pushing 70. So it trades pretty well. Actually, it looks like it's kind of turning the corner longer term. That's, yeah, that's one we definitely want to be active in the back half of this year. And I mean, I, and a disclaimer too: we're going to be using uh, we're, we're using zero X for uh, a lot of our application when it comes to Rhythm, uh, the Rhythm platform. Yep. And Chinmay, you could probably go into a little more detail about how we're going to be using that, but but uh, it's just as a disclaimer, we're we're pretty invested into it. <laughs> I don't think we need to go into details right now, but uh, in general, yes, there'll be a lot of uh, scenarios where instead of building, we'll be just using zero X because they've already built the functionality. It's a faster way to go, go to production. Yeah, fair enough. We'll have to save that for another show. Yeah, save it. We're giving you guys a cliffhanger, like a episode of a good Netflix series. That's right. <laughs> Hold on to that. No binging, though. You just got to wait till we make the next show. So, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want to talk. Say what? 
that would be quite a tech talk, like super technical. <laughs> hey, our audience likes technical. I think that we we polled them, and they said yes. We want the technical talk. We didn't poll them, but they let us know our Slack. So oh, that's good. Um, so I guess before we uh wrap things up we should we should cap this off with a little bit more trading like look look back into the majors real quick uh the light coins uh the ether classics the ether see what those markets are doing and um then close it up it's a pretty good episode yeah that sounds good so what are we on here there's the 27th we have month end coming up which i don't know if it really matters that much as far as capital flows, it definitely does in the institutional markets. So, but I like to kind of think about in terms of monthly closes matter, weekly closes matter. So, you know, the long term bull market remains intact on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, all across the board on the majors um, and really the general market overall. And that's just simply because we haven't broken the monthly reversals or the weekly reversals, which are all kind of below the market. So 6,000 on BTC is that is one of those points. And it looks like we'll close out March above that level. But we do have a daily cycle that started to roll over Sunday night. So we've, we made some sales. Um, some of our guys were hedging a little bit, which makes sense for the intermediate term, but we're still kind of in this patient, you know, digestive mode where, the monthly cycle is still coming down. Maybe maybe it plays out for another month or two. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, the big picture pivot on the up is still 12,000. There's probably not going to see any real um, crazy momentum like we had last year until you get above there. And then, you know, the real risk is below 6,000. So we've just been trading it around in the meantime. Um, I think that's kind of the best game plan is you get decent dips on the hourly or four hour charts. There's some opportunities, but when you do get a three, five, eight day rally, you don't want to be shy about uh, booking some of those gains because it's just still kind of a soft market. That's all I got. Be patient is what I heard. Yeah. Okay. But if you're interested in you know, our listeners, uh, it's the best way to join our chat room if you want to learn more about our trading model and kind of what we're doing and seeing and just general trading talk. And what we do, it's JenkinsRM.com. There's a chat room tab on the top right. We've got some of our educational services there too. Um, that's pretty much it. We've talked about Rhythm. Rhythm is our um, platform we're building out our trading platform. So Jimmy is a big part of that. That's the rhythm.network. If any of you guys are interested in checking that out. And other than that, Jimmy, you, you know, people are around, you're in our river chat, right? Yeah, I am. Yes. I'm not that active, but I say, yes, I am. Yeah. I mean, you can go ahead and uh, plug your site, blockxlabs.com, right? If someone wants to get a hold of you. Perfect. You just did. Thank you. Just be sure to mention you heard us on the uh, buy or sell. What the hell? No, perfect. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a fun, casual chat. I really like it. First, I was worried about uh, the preparation and stuff, but when we started, I was like, oh, this is too relaxed. I like it. So, oh, yeah. That's one of the majors that we have in terms of like lis listeners. Listeners would really like it. It's a casual show, not like something that people run around for. So, loving it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thanks for having me. And if any listener has any questions for me, uh, they can email me. It's C Patel, P A T E L, at blockxlabs.com. And the website is blockxlabs.com. All right, nice. buddy. Thanks, all right. Jim, for coming on. We'll have you on again for sure. Thank you. That's all I got. Yep. Wrap it up. All right, so guys, the easiest way to get involved in our community of traders and what we're doing in markets, um, really on a global macro perspective, is go to JenkinsRM.com. We have on the top right a link, chat room. It's free to join that area. You come in, ask us questions. You see what our community is all about. We've got a couple of paid rooms in there. Our crypto team is in there for 99 bucks a month. It's probably one of the best real-time alert signals across the entire digital asset space and as far as, as far as just the value that 
all the the other uh, paying subscribers in there brings. It's uh, it more than pays for itself. So that's available. You can also see again JenkinsRM.com. The top right we have some of our educational services. Um, Ten years of my institutional model that I built out on uh, trading cash treasuries. Uh, that whole nine hours video on demand teach you everything, the three pillars of our model covers analysis, risk, execution. We talk risk management, position sizing, trading plan, psychology of trading. Um, that's all there. And then we also have some information on, on some of our group coaching and mentoring we do. We have a live room and we trade together uh, two days a week. Um, nothing like being in the trades together live, uh, making some money together, but also really learning um, everything, the emotions that are involved with being inside of trades and all the growth that comes from that. So all that's there, JenkinsRM.com. You guys can follow us at my uh, Twitter handle, at the Jason Jenkins. And you can also search Jason Jenkins on YouTube. That'll get us to our Block Edge Capital um, YouTube channel.